everybody and welcome back to the visual guys it's great stuff welcome back visuals um today we're gonna to be doing another film review um we're gonna take a look i don't know what, the, what was that what the fuck was that we're gonna take a look at collateral beauty um actually in my head i, ha I had me picture and putting it there but i've just done that great stuff um <laughs> right I actually have to write down the actors here because, you know, the, the main lot you, that you see all the time, there's a shitload of actors and I'm just really crap at, like, remembering them. I tried this intro, like, twice now and um, I keep forgetting people. I'll quickly run through. Will Smith, Kate Winslet, Kira Knightley, Helen Mirren, Edward Norton, Naomi Harris, Michael Penner and Jacob. I think it's, I think it's Lollamore. The last dude I've never, ever heard of. Everyone else is obviously an established actor. I've heard of them, but, um. Not heard of him, but regardless, he was okay in the film. But yeah, let's get on with the review. I'll run through the review, tell you what I thought about it. I'm oh, sorry, tell you the re review, run through the film and how it went down, and then I'll tell you what I thought about it. God, we're getting so good at these! Um, but just remember, guys, if you could, it would be awesome, awesome, awesome if you could like these reviews that I do. Um, subscribe to the channel and um, share them, because people want to see this rambling mess talk more! I'm sorry, I can't sort this face out. I was born with it. Um, right, we're going to the film. Will Smith, uh, he's at his company. He's, he works at like an advertisement company and he um, does like a speech and he's like, I've got three things I live by. Um, time, love and death or love, time and death, whichever order. And he's all happy and smiley. But then all of a sudden, like after that really short scene, it cuts three years later and it gets back and it's all doom and gloom. And during that three years, he's, uh, he's actually uh, lost his daughter to, um, it's a form of brain cancer. I wouldn't even offend anybody with pronouncing it because I'm crap at pronouncing them kind of shit and I don't want to just bring out a medical disease which I don't even know how to pronounce, but it's like some form of brain cancer. Um, and all of his friends, like Edward Norton and that, they work with him and um, they need basically him to come back because he's the boss. Their jobs are slowly going to be getting lost. Their company's falling apart and they really need Will Smith. But he's literally... He's in nowhere. He's completely disconnected himself from the world and being alive and just, he's given up basically. Um, but the the first bit of the film, Will Smith doesn't even say any sing, like a single word apart from his first little scene. It's all Edward Norton and stuff like that. They're doing all the talking and they're basically right, we need to get him back, we need to get him back. And uh, Edward Norton, he's casting an actor for a, a, a audition, whatever they're doing, a trailer they're doing. Um, it's Kira Knightley. Um, but she gives him this like this one liner for his advert and he's like, Oh my god, that was actually pretty good. But then she just sort of runs off. Uh he chases her and ends up at this um performing arts studio, um, stage. <clears throat> That's where we see um fucking Helen Mirren and that Jacob, I can't remember his name, but they basically they end up get playing Love Time and Death. He gets down talking and says, Oh, if this deal comes off, I'll I'll give you a load of money for your project and stuff like that. Um comes back, he talks to um Kate Winslet and stuff, and uh, he goes, oh, because he cheated on his missus. He says, oh, actually, I've got an idea of how we can get him out of this slum and get us out of this mess and get this deal that we want with this other company. Um, the private investigator that followed him during him cheating on his missus, they use her to follow Will Smith um, as he's going around doing his stuff, and he casts um, Kira Knightley, that Jacob, <coughs> and Helen Mirren, is um, time, love, and death. Uh, Helen Mirren is death. Uh, the Jacob guy is time, and Kieran Knightley is love. Um, and the reason why he gives them them roles and says, "Go out and do this," because Will Smith writes three letters to Love, Time, and Death, basically saying, um, at one point he loved them, but now he's like, "Death, I hate you." Blah blah blah. Why couldn't you have took me, not my daughter? Uh, time says, "There's not enough time. You never give me enough time with my daughter." And love, um, love. He just it was like a one line. It was quite quite powerful. Um, I'll let you guys get hit by that, that little one-liner, but it's just like a little one-liner does to death, which is pretty uh, to love, which is pretty cool. <sighs> I'm not going to lie as well. I broke down immensely in this film. Everybody that's watching my reviews, I've said it many times, I'm a big crier. I, it's so easy for a, a song, a movie, a TV show to just absolutely hit me, and I break down in a mess. I did it in this film quite a lot. I'm still manly. I could grow a beard. I just cry into it. <laughs> but yeah, after he's cast then... Uh, they set up different stages where they should interact with him, and they set it up really well so that, like, they have a little, other little actors that walk past him, like, who's he talking to? As if, like, he's like, oh, crap, so maybe they are really them. But his first interaction is with Death, 
And she just sits down at a dog bench, uh, sorry, in a dog park on a bench. And basically, that she hands him back his letter that he wrote. And she's like, why did you write this, blah, blah, blah. And she explains why we need death in our human life cycle, in our human process. Um, and he's like, nah, nah, get away. Then he's stopped by time. Time comes into his office. Um, he's got all these dominoes set up. I'll, I'll explain the dominoes at the end. Because throughout the film, he keeps setting up loads of dominoes, taking ages to build them and just knocking them down. Um, and time starts giving him loads of jip. He's like, yabbing at him. He's like, oh, it's not my fault. You know, you people always complain. There's not enough time, blah, blah, blah. And then he runs off. And again, they set it up. So it's like, Will Smith's like, crap, was I even talking to somebody there? And then Love just walks into a restaurant when he's sat having his dinner. And he's like, oh, come on, man. I'm eating, blah, blah, blah. So that's all people have interacted with him now, and he's kind of believing that they're in his head, but real. Um, and he keeps appearing at this, like, uh, gathering, this meeting of, of families and parents that have lost children. And he just sits and looks out the window. But eventually, after so many times of going, he actually walks in. And he won't say his daughter's name throughout the whole entire film. They, what was your child's name? And he just goes, nah, nah. Ah, with that. Ah. <laughs> and then we get back... Um, to just before the second meeting of Love, Time and Death with Will Smith. And we start to find out um, that Kate wins it. She's getting too old. She doesn't feel like, she, you know, time's caught up with her. And she can't have kids now because she feels like she's too old. And she interacts with time the most. Um, Michael Penner, he actually is got a disease as well. He's actually dying. And he's the one that has the most interaction with death. And death reassures him and says, listen, it's natural. You need to tell your family to get your affairs in order and stuff. <coughs> and... Um, Edward Norton, he wants to rekindle his love with his daughter and he has the most interaction with love, which I thought was a really unique idea because he casts these three people and then each three, like Edward Norton and that, have interactions with the three tough time of death, but the, the ones that they interact with are they're going through that emotion or that feeling or whatever you'd want to call it. Ah, it was just, it was like, what? I didn't see that coming because like I said, Kate Winslet want kids. Um, Michael Penn is dying. Edward Norton wants to rekindle his love with his daughter. And it was, it was like a nice little swerve. I was like, oh my God, really? But yeah, they meet back up for Will Smith for the last time because they only visit him twice each. And then this time they record it and then they edit them out, even though I'll get to that bit in a second. But they edit him out in the video and he watches the video back and he's like, yeah, I'm crazy. He signs over the company to his pals and that because he's good mates with all three of these. And he's like, yeah, 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 I signed the deal. And he eventually signs this paper, um, basically acknowledging that his daughter's dead oh, don't break down Dan. <laughs> um oh, i'm gonna go i'm not gonna go i'm not gonna go shut up and uh yeah we we finally get him back into the council meeting and he's starting to talk to the woman that's heading the council meeting and stuff like that and her daughter's also died um and then they go back Back and forth with each other loads. He keeps meeting her. He wanted, like, you know, my daughter's name. He won't say it. And he won't say what she died of. They keep going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then we get towards the end of the film, right? And the woman says, uh, the woman that's in the council, she says, oh, when that, my daughter died, there was a woman, there was a, like, a lady sat next to me. And she said, just remember to watch out for the collateral beauty. And you're like, what the hell does that mean? And it starts all fitting right into place. Um. Because Will Smith goes back to the woman's house and you find out throughout the film that this guy's been, Will Smith's been going back to this woman at the council meeting. And he, she is actually his ex-wife, the mother of their child that they both lost. And I was like, oh, no way. You kind of get it as the film's going on because she gets a note um, and it, uh, she, she has a note that her ex-husband, Will Smith, left her. I know it sounds a bit complicated now to try and find the right words to use. Um, it said, only if we were strangers... Uh, and that's why she asks him and approaches him like they're strangers, you know, what was your child's name? What did she die of? And all this kind of stuff. And then it all fits into place. Oh, right. So they managed to rekindle. Um, and the woman sat in the hospital when her child died was actually deaf. Um, Helen uh, Mirren herself. Um, is it Helen Mirren? Yeah, Helen Mirren. Helen Mirren herself. Um, she was the one in the hospital that said, beware, you know, watch out for the collateral beauty. Ah! And then Will Swift goes back, he finally says his daughter's name, what she died of, he rekindles his love with his ex, um, and they're walking through Central Park, his, uh, Edward Norton's rekindled his love with his daughter, Michael Penn has settled his affairs and stuff like that, and Time tells um, Kira Knightley, uh, not Kira Knightley, sorry, uh, Kate Winslet, he tells her, listen, you know, you uh, having a child isn't just, you know, biological, you don't just have to birth a child, a child is somebody that you bring up and you embrace and you love, and you... You think, ah, oh, it was just, it was beautiful. <laughs> um, 
So they all get figured out. They're all sorted now. They're good in the end. They've got a big paycheck from the thingy. And then you get to the end. They're walking through the um, Central Park. And then Will Smith turns around. There's Death, Love and Beauty. And it turns out that they weren't these actors that the other lot hired. They were genuine actors. Uh, sorry, they were genuine Love, Time and Death. And it was just so beautiful. And it was like, ah, get in. Like I said, um, I don't... I, this little review, I don't think I've done this film a lot of justice. I've rambled and I've tripped over myself loads. Um, <laughs> there was so much worthies and I'm not the best at putting words together. But that was the film. It was absolutely beautiful. I broke down a million times. I'm going to try and wrap this up now because I wanted to keep it 10 minutes. So we're going over now. But thank you guys for watching. Um, oh, and quickly, the film. The film said to me was stop being such a girl and crying at everything. No, it, it was a really beautiful film. Um, it really talks about the values of loving each other and loving your family and your friends. It really tells you the values of, you know, literally, tomorrow's not promised. Enjoy your time no matter what you're doing. Kind of why I started the YouTube channel because regardless of what happens, I want to wake up, make a video and enjoy myself as I'm doing it. Because even though this video is me rambling, I've enjoyed it. Um, See, so I'm taking on the lessons. <laughs> and death is just a natural thing. Obviously, you don't want to see loved ones, friends, pets children anything die you don't want to see anybody die but it is just one of the things that have to happen and you have to do your best to embrace it and enjoy the collateral beauty i think uh that was a nice hit lending i'm gonna probably go over and cry loads now because it's such an emotional wreck and bastard um but thank you guys for watching hopefully you enjoyed this review hopefully you go out and watch the film and i'll try and keep my next one a lot more short and a lot less rumbly thank you guys for watching peace out